Please remember, while Fuller House is a family show, the Fullest House podcast is not. Therefore, listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Fullest House podcast, where we're a bunch of friends who do occasionally make out. I'm Harrison Bloom. I'm Zach Horowitz. And I'm Mark Green. And when you say that we make out, it is with each other. We're just that close. Of course. And yeah. it's not like a weird thing. No. No. I mean, like, it's it's a totally normal thing. You know, we got socks on. It's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, got socks on? Yeah. <laughs> you keep your socks on during those makeout sessions, Zach? Well, How yeah. dare you? I thought I thought we had a more intimate relationship than that. Yeah. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that you were so adamant about the socks. <laughs> Anyway, guys, Kimmy feels terrible because she's not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's how we open what, it up. What an opener. What an opener. <laughs> In this episode where the characters all very easily resolve the conflicts that they had in the previous episode. This is true. There oh, was yeah. not much effort required. No, <laughs> they did it very easily. Mark, I don't know if you still have the list, but I'm pretty sure like every conflict brought up at the end of the last episode is solved at some point. I do have the list. Yeah, do you need me to run well, through it again? S- sort of, Danny. Not okay. really, Well, oh, I should run through it again because the yeah. majority of... Like, the first half of this episode is just spent recapping all the things that happened in the last episode. We'll we'll, we'll just go through, and and I'll just, like, check off in my head how many of them are solved. Which is, one, um, Becky and Danny lost their jobs. They're being replaced by Mario Lopez. Two, Joey's wife got a job on a cruise ship, so now Joey is stuck with his horrible children. (laughs) Three, Marius wants to see other people and broke up with Ramona. Oh, that's, yeah. That one we don't really address. That one's not mentioned. We don't really address. I guess because it's not really a conflict. Ramona just felt bad about it. (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Four. Rocky isn't Jay Money's girlfriend. Oh my god. That's definitely brought up. Five. They're discontinuing Mr. Rudy Zero, which is brought up. It is brought up. (laughs) (laughs) That's more important than Ramona's Ramona's big relationship with with, uh, Japanese boy and man member Mary Isio of the band Sexy Zone. Yep. Uh, six, Steve got a job in L.A. This one's not addressed, but Tommy and Pamela have gum in their hair. Oh, I mean, they don't have gum in their hair at the start of this episode, so I'm going to consider that solved. Okay. Yeah. Rose can't come to Max's party. Mm-hmm. And nine, Kimmy doesn't think she's pregnant. I've counted seven out of nine that are resolved. Seven out of nine are resolved and resolved in some way. very in some easily. Way. Yeah. The only ones that don't are that Joey still has his demon spawn kids and uh, Ramona is still heartbroken. Although it's not really mentioned. Mary yeah. of the band Sexy Zone is not mentioned. Right. I guess she got over it. I mean, he does live 5,000 miles away. And now she's free for Chad Brad Bradley. That's true. I guess she she and she and Rocky had a real heart to heart and Ramona's oh, over that's it true. now. Yeah. But DJ's talking to Steph. She's telling her, you know, I'm going to cheer you up. You got to cheer up. Don't be sad. But she also says, you know, if you want to, it's not in my nature to tell people what to do. And I said, ha ha ha. And then Steph started laughing. Yep. (laughs) Indeed. This show has become (laughs) (laughs) self-aware. It only took them three seasons. (laughs) It took them three seasons. No, it's that they've come to know their characters, which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. They also changed showrunners, as we found out. Um, yeah, we want to we want to talk about this. Uh, we don't we don't have to. I just it is a thing that happened. <laughs> yep. We don't need to go into the reasons why. We can just say that there was a showrunner. This change. was Jeff Franklin's last episode for reasons that are thoroughly unpleasant, and we like to keep this a fun podcast. You can yeah. Google it if you want after the podcast, but yeah. Hmm. Um, but it's bad. Um, not very good. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, you know, it is very good. We cut to the next scene. Danny and Joey are in bed together. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's wonderful. The audience cheers. And this is maybe the first time ever that the audience does a sustained cheer and woo at something that is actually deserved. Yeah, it's completely justified. <laughs> that is a very good, funny visual. Two grown yeah. men in a bed together. Oh, I'm sorry. Was it two grown men? <laughs> I was I was getting to that. Because, <laughs> because then, who pops out? 
Uncle Jesse oh. in the same bed. <laughs> yep. So we have three grown men, and I'm sure that's it. But wait, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> Because Steve is also here, but he's not in the bed. He's on the floor adjacent to the bed. Yes, but they've all slept together. Why is he on the floor adjacent to... They have a full, like, couch in the living room. Why was no one sleeping on the couch and Steve was sleeping on the floor? Well, Mark, but wait, there's more. There's one more, Mark. Wait, I... No, no, no. Surely four is... No, that's (laughs) that's where you're wrong, my friend. Because he... This was... he. Now we're cutting back to the bed itself. At the foot of the bed lies one famous race car driver, Fernando Hernandez Guerrero, Fernandez Guerrero, who's been there the whole time. Oh, boy. Oh, chef's kiss. Oh, it's so good. It's so wonderful. good. It's so good. It's it's really wonderful. I just want to point out this one line that Steve says uh, when he first gets up. And he's like, yeah, I've been lying here the whole time. Also, which one of you stepped on my head while I was sleeping last night? To which Joey says that he thought his head was a cantaloupe. Which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, well, Steve says, how is that any better? (laughs) Stepping on a cantaloupe in the middle of the night. Or, does Joey just really hate cantaloupe? (laughs) He just, like, curb stomps Steve's head. I mean, for, like, personal reason. Maybe, like, a cantaloupe is his children's favorite food. And it just Mm. reminds him of his children every time he sees cantaloupe. So he just needs to smash it. Now I'm just imagining in Joey's hatred for cantaloupes, he just curb stomps Steve's head into the floor when he gets out of bed. Because <laughs> I thought it was going to be something like, you know, like a cantaloupe murdered Joey's family. And so now he has dedicated his life to revenge against the cantaloupes. <laughs> Is that our spinoff for the episode? Well, actually, I think our spinoff... Joey Gladstone Fruit Ninja? <laughs> Joey Gladstone Fruit Ninja is very good. I also thought uh, once Steve leaves... Um, Danny makes a comment about how there are just four men in a bed, and I thought four men in a bed was a pretty it, clear that's sitcom also pretty idea. Yes, that I, is, I also yes. brought up, that is, uh, once we're done with Fuller House, that's going to be our next project that we do, is yeah. the four, four men, men in, in a bed. bed podcast, is where the three of us get into a bed together and just talk about what's on our minds while Tyler sits at the foot of the bed and stares at us judgmentally. It is <laughs> the first podcast fully recorded in a bed. Yes. yes. I also want to point out, like... The more people that pop up, the more confused they get. But when Fernando pops up, Fernando's just like, ooh, sleeping with you guys was great. <laughs> Slept like a baby. He is not ashamed of sleeping in a bed with four men. He is proud of himself. And he yeah. does not care. Exactly. Good on Fernando. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the three dads from Full House, they start planning. They're talking about their lot in life. They're asking, are we losers? They decide Danny and Becky, they're going to go and they're going to they're going to demand their jobs back. Yeah. And Joey and Jesse are going to do something. <laughs> they're going to do their thing. <laughs> they're going to do a thing. Which, by the way, Danny's plan solves Jesse's problem. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said this like during the episode. I was like, Jesse, why are you doing like your own thing? Because yeah. Danny's trying to solve your problem for you. Your problem is that your wife doesn't have a job. So now you have to get one. And if your wife well, has well, they, a job. They frame it. They frame it as like Becky told me to get a job, so I have to go get a job. But the reason Becky told you to get a job was because she lost her job. Yeah. That's yeah. the only reason. Everything was fine before then. Yeah. I guess he's just now intrinsically motivated to work again. <laughs> yeah. He, it's 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 a real it's a real change overnight. And I do mean overnight literally. Um Yeah, quite literally overnight. Yeah. Also off screen, because spoilers, he doesn't they don't there's never a scene where they discuss their plan. They just go off screen to do something and they come back with their problem resolved yeah they just come back and they're like hey guys we solved the problem but we're gonna get to that when we get to it yeah um what we're getting to right now is guys rocky is doing ramona's makeup they're yes. friends Yay. rocky and ramona are becoming best friends rocky has fully been subsumed by this family yes <laughs> oh god our, our favorite girls they are her only friends <laughs> <laughs> she called them a cult in her first appearance and now they have slowly They've slowly absorbed slowly her into the her. cult. Yep. But yeah, she's doing Ramona's makeup. We get a nice little shot of Ramona with a lot of eye black, just goth girl Ramona. Uh, and then yep. Jay Money comes in. Jay Money. Jay Money. And he gives a very inspiring speech. Yeah, well, he has a whole list. Yes. He tells Rocky that uh, their magical, life changing kiss, and that's a quote, meant nothing to him. <laughs> um, and also he says that Ramona's a friend stealer. 
sorry, friend snatcher is friend his phrase. Friend snatcher. And then he makes a dramatic exit, which is just, we love our sad boy. Our sad, sad so boy. sad. I sort of wanted the exit to be more dramatic. I just like, imagine if he had a cape. <laughs> yeah. I think J yeah. Money needs a cape. J Money needs a cape. A cape would fit. Not not specifically for the scene, but like in general. in general. I think J Money with a I, cape. <laughs> I think he's a cape guy. Mm -hmm. I, okay, wait, hold on. If I can, if Everybody I can, if knows I can bring one. up a counterpoint. Oh, yes. Yeah. Top hat. Mm, <laughs> can I bring up a counterpoint to that? Yes. Top hat and cape. Ooh. Ooh. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Are we just turning J Money into a magician? Just give him a wand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I. My next thing was gonna be he needs he needs a he needs a cane. Yeah. Yeah. And he like throws down like a smoke bomb and it, like he throws down a smoke bomb and the smoke clears and he's still there because he doesn't realize he had to run away. <laughs> I was gonna say we've come up with the ultimate dramatic exit, um, but yeah, J Money would absolutely botch that. <laughs> so yeah, no, I feel like he, he would definitely like, throw disappear. the smoke bomb down, call from all the smoke, and forget to run away. So by the time the smoke clears, he's just still there and he's coughing. Yep. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's what's gonna happen. Then Rocky punches him. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then he adds something to his to do list, which is cry. <laughs> don't yep. cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. Goes through his list. Yep. Um, Rocky and Ramona like laugh at him, which I thought was a fun touch that the scene didn't just end with him leaving, that they yeah. literally had them be like, what a pathetic man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. DJ and Steve then are recapping their plot from the last episode. Um, and let me see if I have this right, um, because I forget. Uh, the details. It's a very normal thing. Um, Lonzo Ball shows yes. up. Yes, oh, Lonzo good. Ball, formerly of the Lakers, now currently at this of point the New still Pelicans. in the Lakers. When the show aired, yeah. I believe he. I, I think they mentioned something about like his rookie season. Who was like the right as he was drafted, like rookie season. Lonzo Ball. He just comes in randomly. Lonzo Ball is just here. He drove up from L.A. during the fog. Yeah, all all of them are trapped at the house because of the fog. <laughs> He knew where Steve was as well. I, I think that's also a point we should mention. Yeah. They asked how he knew, and he just says drones. And they're just like, yeah, okay. As if that solves that everything. <laughs> Lonzo, that only, uh, that only opens up more questions. <laughs> Why were they spying on him? What I, I did not remember that Lonzo Ball showed up in this episode, and this got me really excited because I thought, oh, if Lonzo is here, does that mean we can get LeVar Ball on Fuller House? They don't know who LeVar Ball is, but if you know, you know. But yes, LeVar Ball on Fuller House would be absolutely amazing because LeVar Ball, just as a person, I think would fit in entirely. He would fit in perfectly with these fictional characters. I could see like LeVar Ball going up against like J Money in basketball. Ooh, should he be one of the four men in a bed? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, hold on. Who is your who's your dream casting of four men in a bed? Mm, I think it's gotta be like LeVar Ball, Adam Sandler. Uh ooh. I think LeVar Ball and Adam Sandler would have good chemistry. LeVar Ball, Adam Sandler. I I feel like if, if you put in LeVar Ball, I think you gotta put in Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> sure. Because like here's 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 my thing. I think LeVar Ball, um, Charlie Day, yes, um, David Schwimmer as sort of a straight man. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know why I keep picturing Randall Park in the bed. <laughs> oh, Randall Park. I think yeah, Randall Park should be in the yeah. bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Randall think Randall Park. Park is my fourth. Yes. Randall Park is my uh, fourth. Randall Park. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is wonderful. Yep. <laughs> I guess that's it. Yep. Yep. We've we've cast it. I guess that's officially our spinoff. It's officially, <laughs> yeah. That's four men in a bed. So um, let's run, run back one more time. It's Lavar Ball, Charlie Day, David Schwimmer, and Randall Park in a bed. Yep. Yes. Yep. In a bed. <laughs> but Lonzo Ball is there specifically to beg Steve to work for the Lakers. So maybe they have the drones on Steve because he's just that much of an asset. I'd think you could find another podiatrist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of equal skill. Or at least yeah. relative skill. <laughs> yeah. I guess Steve is the best podiatrist in, in all the of state. California. <laughs> yeah. I just love the fact that they sent like I mean, I I mean I get the fact that like Lonzo is like at the time, like everyone knows who Lonzo Ball is. He's one of their most marketable players. But he's also mm -hmm. a rookie at the time. I'm pretty sure he was a rookie at the time. Like ninety nine percent sure. So they just like send their rookie player off to off to convince this podiatrist to 
be their like, podiatrist. They, they don't send a guy to like true. negotiate his salary. Yeah, they, they don't, send, like, send a, a guy player. Who can, like sweeten the deal a bit. Nope, they send the, they no. send they send Lonzo Ball. <laughs> they send Lonzo but Ball. But we should talk about how Lonzo Ball does sweeten the deal, which is that he takes off his shoes to show Steve his feet. He is not wearing socks. Yes. Maybe that's why they need a new podiatrist. Yeah, I think someone pointed that out during the episode, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah he isn't wearing socks. So he, LeVar Ball, to convince Steve, just he just puts his foot up on the table, to which DJ's like, oh yeah, that's nothing, look at my feet, and DJ puts her foot up on the table. And, I mean, to be honest, and like, I'm sorry, DJ, but Lonzo Ball has bigger feet than DJ, which means they are, if there's more feet, they're better feet. Well, of course. That's the the ultimate logic of foot fetishists, I hear. Yes. I don't know. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we saw that. I wrote down in my notes, someone has a fetish. That's that's like the ultimate logic of foot fetishists, is what I would have been, is what I would say if I had. (laughs) If I was a foot fetishist. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you obviously don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. obviously, yeah. But whoever whoever ran this episode, whoever directed this episode, yeah. certainly did. Yeah. Uh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Look that that collection of pictures of feet. That's something completely different. That's an art project. Yeah. Guys, art. I think I figured out. I think I think Dan Schneider was on Fuller was on Fuller House. Dan oh, Schneider yeah. worked on this episode specifically. Hey. Hey. Um. But. Also important is that Steve is legitimately tempted by the feet. Yeah, yeah, which is, it's a really weird... Yeah, what he says is, look at those metatarsals. Those belong in a museum. In a museum. Uh, belong in a museum. Their feet are so, his feet are so wonderful. F- fully Indiana jones Yeah. It's really Imagine weird. Imagine if Indiana Jones stole feet instead of artifacts. <laughs> and then DJ, in order to compete for Steve's love challenges this professional athlete to a push-up contest and wins somehow yeah, how does professional she because dj keeps she has it tight such upper body strength well she is a very talented professional wrestler as we saw in that one of those earliest episodes yeah this is true yeah what's with dj besting professional athletes i also want to say uh i am to be trivia time also, the IMD trivia is really weird in this episode because a lot of it is marked as spoilers, despite it being not spoilery at all, such as like spoil spoilers, uh, sixth appearance of Max's girlfriend Rose, eighth appearance of Rocky, stuff like that is marked as a spoiler for some reason. But anyway, here's another one that's marked as a spoiler saying DJ wait, wait, completes. Wait, 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 we should say spoiler alert. Spoiler first. alert for those of you who. For those of you who weren't paying attention. There were people who didn't know Rose was going to be in this episode or that Rocky was going to be in this episode okay, or that like Ramona was going to be in this episode. They all have our names. I was noticing that. Spoiler alert. Uh, if you didn't pay, if you weren't paying attention to the podcast earlier, uh, DJ completes 17 pushups, 12 of them with one foot on the ground and one up in the air. That's also a thing she does. Well, Alonzo, not Lonzo. The IMDb trivia specifically says Alonzo oh, Jesus. Uh, only completes 13. They didn't even get his name right <laughs> in the IMDb trivia. <laughs> they did get his name right. And the show is implying that the professional athlete can't do 14 push-ups. Also, guys, spoilers. Did you know special guest star in this episode is Lakers point guard Lonzo Ball? Well, Really? Really? I complete. I guess I completely missed the part where he walked in and they said, Lonzo Ball. <laughs> Point guard of also, the Lakers. Also, guys, spoiler alert. Did you know that the name of this episode, Here Comes the Sun, is a reference to the Beatles song of the same name? This is marked oh, as a spoiler. That's a spoiler? This is marked as a spoiler. <laughs> How is that a spoiler? We, we, we have to get through this scene yeah, soon. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. But uh, Lonzo, Steve decides he's going to stay with DJ and not go to work for the Lakers. Lonzo says, I'm the number two pick again. Uh, Which was a very good line. I loved that line a lot. He's very sad because he's the number two pick again. Uh, He was the number two pick in the 2017 NBA draft. Gotcha. That's what this is a reference to. I know nothing about Lonzo Ball, but I did like that joke. It's a very good, it's a very good joke. But he le- he leaves, DJ looks at and says, oh, Alonzo Ball is crying on the lawn <laughs> and then yells at him to go home. <laughs> stop, man up, stop crying, go home, uh, which is a very toxic and mean attitude. Yeah. He should let out his emotions. 
times. Yeah. Just because he's a professional athlete doesn't mean he can't cry. And DJ is very mean. Anyway, the next thing I have on my notes is Jimmy exclamation point. Yay! <laughs> Jimmy's back! Jimmy's back! He's Jimmy's back! back. back. It has. I feel like it, it's been it like has. a solid it's been... couple episodes stretch without Jimmy Gibbler. And we missed him so much. It's been too long. He's wonderful. He, he's, <laughs> he's here to cheer up Steph. He brought her a milkshake and he's carrying a box. And he reveals what's in the box, which is... Uh, Zach, do you want to say? Because you're kind of you're, you're, you're kind of well, crumbling. I, I, I was more so gonna say based on like the so <laughs> he brings her a box of kittens, which is wonderful for a specific reason. And yes. Zach, do you now want to explain the reason? Sure. Uh, so the first time through when we were watching this, this is why I was like laughing earlier because I was remembering all this stuff. Or during our first watch through, we just called uh, Jimmy Gibbler. We referred to him as Kelso because he reminded us a lot of Kelso from that '70s show, especially with like the long hair. Yep. Just like he looks a person. lot like Kelso. His personality is a lot like Kelso. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and there's a scene in that '70s show. <laughs> there's a scene where... in that '70s show where it just like cuts to them when they're older, and Kelso is like, "Hey, I got you a box." And then uh, Jackie, who's also there, is like, "Please." <laughs> well, it's not, not I got box. you a box. It's I got you something. She says, oh, yeah. "Please." Please, not another box of dogs. It's another box of dogs! <laughs> so it's just this weird thing where it's like, are they patterning him off of Kelso? It's another box of dogs! <laughs> Zach, you want to you wanna sh- shout it one more time? It's another box of dogs! <laughs> there we go. I'm satisfied. Like, yeah, like Mark said, it, it makes you wonder, is it intentional? Is it uh, just a right? cute reference? Does they got feedback that he's like Kelso? Or is it just... Is that just a natural progression of a person who is like Michael Kelso? And like at yeah. this point, I feel like I know our first watch that we were going absolutely fucking insane at that point because yeah. we love All that systems scene. tend towards Kelso. <laughs> yes. All systems tend towards box of dogs. Yep. It's another box of dogs. Except okay, in this I'm, case, I'm it's a box of cats. We should clarify. Yep. It's a box of It is a box of kittens. Legally it's another distinct. box of kittens. Yeah. Legally distinct. So yeah, he he trying to cheer <laughs> Stephanie up, and it kind of works. Just well, good. well, yeah. Well, she he's trying to cheer her up, and she, you know, she's still sad. And he says, even if it doesn't work out with Kimmy, there are other ways you can be a mom. Yeah. Um, and he tells her, no matter what happens, you're my person. He's dropping some wisdom this episode. Yeah, that's a good wisdom, Jimmy Gibbler. What a good himbo. Jimmy Gibbler has a lot of good wisdoms. He does. Yes. And, uh, and Steph's like, yeah, you're right. I mean, look at how happy, uh, Jesse and Aunt Becky are when they adopted their daughter and then cut to, uh, Lori Laughlin chasing down kids to get them back to rowing practice. Well, not, <laughs> not cut to, she just runs through the that scene. Was, was she waiting that was there? Good, that was a good one. That, but that was very good. <laughs> Thank you. Every Thank once you. in a while you do. While. It's funny because yeah. you, you throw out a lot of them. Like anytime Becky is on screen, you try to relate everything she says or does <laughs> to, to the Lori Lachman scandal. But every once in a while you fucking nail it. Exactly. <laughs> See, like, here's the thing. If you throw a bunch of shit at the wall, eventually something's going to stick. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was. Great. Yeah. But okay. the kittens escape, and they were rentals. Oh no! Yeah, they were rental kittens, which I I just want to know how that works. Uh, well, he goes to the kit the kitten store, and he's like, "I'd like to borrow your kittens, please." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 run by the same people who run the sacred cow store. Uh, oh yes, of course. Rem- remember classic bit right. the sacred classic cow store and our friend bit. Toby. Yeah. Fuller House Bit, the sacred, great, famous Fuller House Bit, the sacred cow store. Does Toby sell cats? Uh, I think he does sell oh, cats. Good. Oh, are, are we just throwing back everything now? Our favorite friend, Toby, who hasn't made yeah. an appearance in season one, I don't think? He's been busy. He's running the sacred cow store. I know. I know. He's been very busy. Were we able to get Toby back? He, he, he runs a store where he sells sacred cows and cats, and those are the only two things. <laughs> <laughs> Should we give Toby a call? I mean, if you want to give Toby a call, I mean, you said he's very busy, so. Uh, he's very busy, so maybe we'll leave him we alone. We should respect his time, yeah. We'll respect his time. But, guys, Max is falling apart. He comes up to Danny, he's cleaning the kitchen, and it's 
his and Rose's love is, it's a star-crossed romance, Mm -hmm. like Romeo and Juliet. And he says, I think Harrison, you had note of the quote. What does he say again? Uh, Well, he says, oh, love, oh, life, not life, but love and death, despised, distressed, hated, martyred, killed, uncomfortable time. Why camps thou now to murder, murder our solemnity? Oh, child, oh, child, my soul and not my child, dead art thou. Alack, my child is dead and with my child, my joys are buried. That's what Max says. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. He also says, why must I be a fuller and Rosa Harbenberger? Harrison, I'm giving you snaps. Um, but yeah, he says all of that. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Zach, for those snaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, says all of that. Oh, totally. Yeah, we totally didn't look in the complete Shakespeare <laughs> collection. To no, we went through, we looked at the subtitles, we wrote down the subtitles, yeah, yeah. not the complete works of William Shakespeare. Exactly. Yeah, that was, that was fully, that was a, that was a Fuller House original. Yeah. yeah uh, and then like, here's another piece. I mean, it's like trivia, but it's not on IMDb, but like Max actually speaks in iambic pentameter for the entire episode. Wow. Yeah. It's like perfect iambic pentameter. If you look at it, it is true. You can trust us because we're not liars. Every character speaks <laughs> in their own form of verse. Um, you know, yes. Steve uh, speaks in dactylic hexameter. Um, <laughs> St- uh, DJ speaks in a lot of troches. <laughs> Yeah, I, I Fernando's in prose, but that's about that's like to represent his role in the family, like he's less yeah. lesser a part of the family. Yeah, yeah. Um but Danny is bartending for him. He's giving him chocolate milk. Um, but he cuts him off because and I quote, chocolate milk is a gateway beverage. Uh so I guess I guess Ma- Max is gonna be an alcoholic. He cuts off Max. <laughs> yeah. Cuts off Max. Because Max could become an alcoholic like he's cut off from the milk, kid. Oh my god. Like his aunt Steph. Um, like his oh aunt no. Stephanie. Look how she turned the out. Family. <laughs> yep. I mean I'm look, I'm not saying you're gonna become Steph, but I mean like you're the middle child, she's the middle child. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Zach, as the eldest of three siblings of the same gender, how do you feel about knowing you're going to turn into DJ? You know, I haven't thought about this before. <laughs> and you bringing this up is actually, I feel like I'm going to have, oh God, I feel mm-hmm. like um, midlife crisis is not, the. I'm having an existential crisis right now. I mean, you know, at least, I mean, oh the God. middle one we know is already a mess. Uh, wow. that's, it, we've been new. We knew that for Just a while. absolutely uh, slamming Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> or wait, here's the thing. Uh, wait, if I'm the oldest, I mean, I either turn into DJ or J Money or no. the three boys in this show. <laughs> what's like worse? What's a worse fade? <laughs> you know what? I think I think we're more similar to that. Zach is J Money. That's confirmed. I think that's just gonna be how it is. <laughs> Danny tells Max, like, you gotta confront your problem, like me and Becky did. Yeah. Uh, Look at me and Max. I forget exactly what line prompts it, but Max tells him, mom said we had to use the other bathroom because you were crying in the shower. Oh, Oh, yes. (laughs) And then Danny goes, false. It was the bathtub. I was crying (laughs) in the bathtub last night, not the shower. Big difference. Danny is fully having a crisis. I made a note. Danny does not help Max. It's great. Like Max is like, why are you telling me this? This doesn't help me. And Danny's like, well, I just wanted to tell it yes. to someone. Um, and Max just cuts off the conversation and leaves. The worst shoulder. Yeah. To on. The shoulder that talks. So about he tells it to this little boy. Yep. Completely. Yeah. Completely disregards Max. Max comes in crying and quoting Romeo and Juliet. And Danny's like, well, let me tell you about my thing. I'm just, I'm just imagining it's like Max comes in and he's like, oh, I got a problem. My girl, my, I can't see my girlfriend anymore. It's like Romeo and Juliet. Oh, and then God, Danny's yeah. like, you think that's bad? And then he sets up like a family guy style cutaway. <laughs> this is and worse God. than the time when I had breakfast with Adam Sandler and, and Gandhi. Oh, I, sh- I assumed. <laughs> I assumed that's what it would cut to, Zach. <laughs> Be really weird if it cut to something else. <laughs> <laughs> it cuts to a completely separate scene and they're like why would you expect why would you expect anything else it's, it's like it's, it's like a it's like a different thing it's just like a different thing a completely, a completely other random cutaway it's just like Abe Lincoln in space and then like <laughs> And then Danny, uh, and then Danny Tanner walks in, and he's like, "Wait, oh no, this God. is the wrong cutaway." But Becky comes back, and she's got news about their demands, and it turns out they want Becky back. 
Yeah. Yeah. But not Danny. Oh no. Uh, she's specifically going to host a The View style female panel show called The Gab. Mm -hmm. Which on their part was a very bad investment in the long term. I mean, they couldn't predict it, but like if they could have. Oh, boy. There have never been any controversies <laughs> with hosts of these kind of shows. <laughs> Especially Lori Long. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, Danny is not asked back uh, to yeah, his show. Well, well, my favorite thing is he doesn't say he's, like, crushed or anything. He just says, I'm going to drink some chocolate milk over there by myself. <laughs> and he sits yes. down at the kitchen table. Oh, my God. Um, Jesse and Joey come in. They tell Becky that they bought the Smash Club. Yeah, guys, remember the Smash Club? Remember Full from House from Full House? Remember Full House? Yeah. Remember Full House? Yes. Is it? I'm, I I I don't remember Full House. I'm assuming this is like a club where a bunch of people meet up every Thursday and play Super Smash Brothers. That's what I'm assuming. Well, well, it was. They did meet up and just like they just smashed things. They yeah. wrecked things but that was before smash bros came out mm, right and after it came out they were like oh we can do that instead they named a video game after this club yeah i've been losing so much money <laughs> <laughs> we we have to keep buying new things to smash <laughs> to smash the first rule about the smash club is you don't talk about the smash club yep <laughs> oh no Oh, Jesus. Um, but Becky says, shouldn't you have discussed this with me? And Jesse's like, yes. Want to discuss it? We already bought it. Great. Uh, yes. How do you feel about Joey and I buying the Smash Club that we already bought? I guess they just had the money for it, so. <laughs> it was just lying around. Yeah. Yeah, they all lost their jobs, but they also had the money to buy a club. <laughs> I guess they are very successful people. That's so true. They probably That's true. Have They're some all very. <laughs> Joey still has a job too. His his oh, yeah. problem is just that he's going to spend time with his horrible children, which I want to point out. We, or at least I, always call them his horrible children, and in this episode, Joey uses the words "horrible children." Yes. <laughs> He says, my horrible children. <laughs> my horrible monster children. <laughs> but Jesse, Joey, and Becky all start this chant uh, where they chant, we all have jobs. Oh, and then Danny's still sitting there drinking his milk. Yeah, and he's like, hey, I don't have a job. And they change it to, most of us have we jobs. We all have jobs, except for Danny. <laughs> I wanted them to change it to yeah, that. Yeah, I wanted them to do except for Danny. <laughs> Just to rub it in, name him. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we, cause most of us have jobs is true, but like Max doesn't have a job. Jesse still doesn't have a job. Tommy doesn't have a job. Ramona, J Money, and Rocky don't have jobs. That's true. Does Fernando have a job when he's not racing? He is a famous race car driver. He's a very famous race car driver. But um, in order to cheer Danny up, uh, DJ and Steph tell him that they have a very special guest. Danny wants it to be the Beach Boys, but it's not the Beach Boys. Damn it! Mm -hmm. Is it the is it the new kids on the block? It's Sadly, not the new kids no. on the is block. Is it Lonzo Ball dressed it's, as the Beach Boys? Is it? Macy it's not Gray? Lonzo Ball dressed as the Beach Boys. It's not Macy Gray. Is it Abe Lincoln? It's not is Abe it Lincoln. Adam Sandler and it's Gandhi. also not Adam Sandler with Gandhi. <laughs> Guys, it's Vicky Larson. Woo! Remember Full House? Uh, one remember of the full, full House? One of the Full House characters I actually remember. <laughs> I think it was funny because, like, at least someone when we were watching it said, like, who is that? And I was saying, oh, that's the person he almost married in Full House. And then yeah. he walks in and says, Vicky Larson, the woman I almost married. Yeah, <laughs> <as> if, <laughs> the explanatory Guys, it's dialogue. This, it's this, yeah, charts. exactly. It's this character from the other show that I almost married. You guys remember Full yep. House, don't you? <laughs> um, he tells her, uh, the quote is, I'm divorced. I'm, she asks, how are you doing? He says, I'm divorced, unemployed, and I woke up in bed with Jesse and Joey and some guy named Fernando. <laughs> Love Fernando. Fernando's wonderful. Um, uh, she's surprised that there are still all these similarities to Full House, which, uh, you know what? Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. She's like, Jesse and Joey are still here? You still have uh, the Smash Club is still here? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, Vicky. <laughs> yes it is a it is a cult and you have been indoctrinated already and they all form a circle around vicky and they move in closer as they chant one of us one of us <laughs> one of us i'm realizing this scene 
doesn't influence anything. I guess yeah. it just means that like he feels better now because he's reconnecting with a woman he I, he was in love with, but like that doesn't resolve I his guess problem. So. No. And as far as I it remember, I don't back think she comes back. I don't think she no. comes back either. No, it's just maybe a one it's episode implied thing. that they're dating again or that they're friends again. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It would have been very easy to like have her throw out some kind of like piece of wisdom that helps him get grounded. But instead, they just talk for a while, and she's like, oh, oh, "You, you st- you're still hanging out with Jesse and Joey. <laughs> Do you still live with them? They still have the Smash Club. What's going on?" <laughs> That's it. She just comes in, and she's very confused. Great cameo, Ricky. <laughs> Glad to have you back. Great cameo. We all had fun. Yeah. It's very good. Uh, yeah. So that scene just kind of ends. They're yep. they're yeah. having fun together, and then they're at the Smash Club. Is that what happens next? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. It's an '80s themed party, Heck and yeah. they all and everyone went all out with the '80s theme. Yeah. To like a weird extent. Yeah. yeah. Like they had to get very specific clothing. Like I get. You know, like DJ and Steph and Kimmy, that they're really into it, and they have like either old clothing or they're like, "Oh, we got this clothes." But like, like, like J Money and Ramona and Rocky are all yeah. dressed in eighties themed stuff, and it's like, what is up with this family? Yeah, Rocky had to go home, get herself an eighties costume. Yeah, that's and true. Then come How did back Rocky? Yeah. Club. yeah, that is true. How did Rocky do all that? I, I mean. It's not impossible, but, like, yeah. why would you have that lying around? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. And apparently the Rippers are alive. Yes, they go to yeah. the Smash Club, which is now a laundromat, and who should they find doing laundry on a Saturday night but the Rippers of the band Jesse yep, and the of, Rippers. Of Jesse and the Rippers fame. <laughs> Guys, the best band name. Yes. I also want to say Rippers. there is an actual, like, cool I'm to be trivia about this. This is not marked as spoilers, by the way, although it acknowledges the Rippers, which I guess is kind of a... It's like more spoilery than most of the stuff marked as spoilers. But uh, the Rippers drummer is actually played by John Stamos' nephew. Oh. He was a lot younger than the others, I noticed. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely still alive. (laughs) (laughs) It's a toss-up with the other Rippers. it's like it's like Spinal Tap, where like something bad happens to their drummer, so they have to find a new one. <laughs> yep. Yes. So not all of the Rippers are alive. One has been replaced by been replaced by Jesse's death. One has been replaced yeah. due to the wonderful powers of nepotism. Yes. Which like, I, I I guess maybe the actor was unavailable, but it seems maybe the actor was unavailable. Maybe the actor was dead, <laughs> but it yeah. seems really disrespectful to the Ripper who was replaced. Yeah. It's odd. It's a very Guys, strange decision. Jesse and the Rippers used to mean something. <laughs> <laughs> this band, yeah, used to Before stand we gave for something. Into the corporate yeah. lifestyle. We should go back to the old days of the Smash Club, yep. rock and roll, the bro. Smash Club. <laughs> rock and roll, brother. I think Jesse should fully commit to rock and yes. roll. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So they're at the Smash Club, and I guess because they're there, they just happen to be there. Uh, they start performing. Um, I don't yeah. know what they were doing for they music s- before then, but <laughs> yeah, I guess they they brought all their instruments with them to. Yeah. Maybe he invited their them, laundry. but then they still brought their laundry. I- <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Well, because the whole thing, like like Seth says, you know, what are you doing here? And they say, hey, it's Saturday night. We're doing our laundry. Yeah. <laughs> Of course. But they, they're also does. here with their instruments. <laughs> yeah, their instruments are also here. Maybe they were washing their instruments as well. They, yeah, just throw, throw that guitar in the washing machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, if you can fit it, that's like a really good way to maintain it. Oh, of course, it. yeah. That's, yeah, as a guitar owner. Like, yeah, I was going to say, Harrison, you play guitar. I mean, I like to, you know, use a cold wash and then hang dry it. But, you know, mm-hmm. you can actually put it in the dryer and it would be fine. Yeah, yeah I mean. Yeah. I mean, it shrinks a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but that's bound to happen at some point anyway, so you might as well just, like, go through yeah. with it, you know? I, I mean, Harrison, I, I think, honestly, a little bit of shrinkage, you got it easy. I mean, imagine having to fit an entire drum set into a washing machine. Yeah, that must be such yeah. a pain, you do multiple loads. Oh, yeah. You gotta yeah. do, like, a load per drum, because they're all so big and the washing machine's so small. You gotta separate out the cymbals. Yeah, you gotta separate um, out your cymbals and your drums, exactly. Or else everything's gonna turn pink. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
You get one in there, it's just a disaster. Oh, it's so awful. But anyways, uh, Jesse gets, and the Rippers are up on stage, and Jesse's like, I got, I'm going to sing a song for you guys. It's all, I'm going to sing a song for you guys, and it's about what I like about you. And it's called, What I Like About You. Jesus and he, Christ. Yeah, I think, I think that my <laughs> initial reaction to that was like, he said that, and I was like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> Can't you just sing the song? Like, you, you have to do the cheesy intro. Can't you just, like, say, hey, guys, I'm gonna perform a song. What I like about you. Like, we get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, when this was happening, I was like, is it going to be better than Stephanie singing I'm a Believer? Oh, right. And I, I think it was about, about the same. Yeah. I, they got, they got to stop with, they got to leave the pop hits of the 60s and 70s alone. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, uh, Oh, there's also like a fun bit of the meeting where Jesse's like, all right, we're going to take requests. What song should we play? And people were like, play forever. And then Kimmy goes, free bird. And he should have played free bird. <laughs> she pulls out her lighter and starts waving it. That's so good. Inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fire hazard, Kimmy. <laughs> I think in the end, uh, Jesse's What I Like About You was about the same quality as Stephanie's I'm a Believer. Yeah. yeah. Um he's really nasally when he's singing it. Yeah. In a weird and then way. he calls up Bob Saget and Dave Coulier to sing backup vocals for him and they start singing and it's clearly not Bob Saget and Dave Coulier. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> well, I mean, their 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 real voices are too good uh for TV, you know. Too like, good for would, human ears. It would it would actually like outstage John Stamos and so they have yes. to like tell The last not time Dave Coulier sang a note aloud the person he was singing to exploded. Oh yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's a hazard. He doesn't want to explode his family. Mortal ears aren't meant no. for that voice. You know? So, yeah, they sing their song. Um, oh yeah, and then J Money resolves his conflict. Or he just right. he, he just apologizes to Ramona. He apologizes. Yeah, he apologizes to Ramona and Rocky. There's a good line where he says, like, I'm sorry I called you a friend snatcher. And she says, I'm sorry I called you a big fat baby. And he says, When did you call me a big fat baby? And she says, just now to get even. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I, I like I like their dynamic a lot. So good. The thing with Rocky, Rocky decides that she doesn't want to be his girlfriend because she's not really into the whole labeling thing, man. Yeah. I know we make the joke a lot where we're like, and that's what they said, but she genuinely says I'm not into yeah. labels. And so Jamie is like, so she's like, oh, we can just be friends. And Jamie is like, can we be friends who make out a lot? And she's like, sure. And then they kiss again. Yeah. yeah Jay money. <laughs> Jay money. Jay money. Jay money getting some honey. Yeah. Exactly. Jay money straight with yep. the ladies again. Ish. DJ walks up and says, can you please not do that while I'm watching? Yeah. And then also. Uh, Steve is also there. He's dressed like Don Johnson. Danny's dressed as Don Johnson. It's a big deal. Lonzo Ball comes in and he's a third Don Johnson. Uh, uh, yep. That would have been so funny. And then the incredible. real Don Johnson yes. comes yes. in and says, hey, you guys. <laughs> and they're actually the four men in a bed. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Danny, it's Steve, it's Lonzo Ball, and it's Don Johnson. <laughs> and I do not mean him as, his as any character. I mean, fully the actor. It's John just Johnson. everyone trying to be Don Johnson. Yes. It's like uh, it's it's no 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 wait hold on Mark can I can I can I can I add something into this? Go ahead. It is a contest to see who can be Don Johnson the longest, and the moment <laughs> that anyone breaks character, they are forcibly removed from the bed. Don the real Don Johnson is removed within five minutes. Will the real Don Johnson please stand up? <laughs> But yeah, DJ tells Steve, dressed as Don Johnson, uh, that she called the Lakers and accepted the job for him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because that's a thing you can do, apparently. She fully goes over his head. Yeah. Um, it would be great if she said that, and he's like, great, DJ, now I have to move. I have all this stress now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she, t she doesn't mind watching to take the job. I talk to the Lakers, and they agree they can wait longer because they're in love. And uh, also... Fernando's thing was resolved because the vending machine in the Smash Club has the last can of I forget the name of the soda. Mr. Rudy Zero. Mr. Rudy Zero. It's the last can, but it's yeah. stuck, so he can't get to it. It's a good thing that John Stamos has the Fonz is here. 
beloved 80s icon oh, the Fonz. i know that that <laughs> yeah. threw me oh, a lot wait, yeah he he's dressed in a leather jacket he like he's dressed like the Fonz, and he walks up and he does the Fonz thing and then he goes hey and it's like one happy days was set in the 50s yeah so you're dressed like a person from the 50s and two happy days aired in the 70s uh. <laughs> You're the one who was like, we're having an 80s themed party. Or actually, maybe he wasn't. But it's like, I don't know. come on, it's man. Sad. That was a weird Beloved reference. 80s icon, the Fonz. 80s icon, the Fonz. Um, Tyler pointed out there was a cartoon of the Fonz in the 80s. And I'm sure that's what they were referencing. Oh, totally. Yeah. But also, who who shows up? But Rose. Right, Rose, Rose is, is here. here. Yay. She has one hour before CJ Xanax yeah, wears so off. Like, one hour before CJ Xanax wears off, and she regrets ever coming to the Smash Club. She's dressed like Madonna. Max is dressed like MC Hammer. They have like they have like a whole thing where it's like, I'm dressed as Madonna. I don't know who she is, but she wore a lot of crosses, so I'm assuming she's some kind of church leader. And it's like, oh little kids don't know a who Madonna figure. is. Religious figure. Right, the religious figure. Um, the girls thank the dads. Becky, Jesse, and Pamela reveal that they're moving back to San Francisco. And Joey also says, I'm also moving back to San Francisco. Um, and first time we were like, is he going to leave his kids in, in Las Vegas? <laughs> but he's like, and my horrible children are coming with me. Yeah. Uh, to which Kimmy immediately boos. Yeah. And it's like, how is Kimmy so good in this episode? Yeah, I know. Kimmy boos, Rose cheers because she doesn't know any better. <laughs> um, and also Danny's going to move back to San Francisco. Yay. And he's going to move into his old room oh, in the that's house. So good. That's DJ a, and Steph can bunk that's together. That's such a great idea. <laughs> this is wonderful. This is so good. It's a great idea. It's a hanging <laughs> thread. Um, my, my two adult children can live together. Yes. We'll, we'll reboot four men in a bed and make it four women in a bed. Yes. And then we have one final musical number from Steph, who sings an original song. I'm pretty sure it's an original song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's an original song called You Bring Me Luck. Uh, she says, I have a song about how you all bring me luck. It's called You Bring Me Luck. Um, and I'll say, like, I think it's 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 better than the covers they yeah, do. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, they, they, yeah, it's better. Yeah, yeah um, it's better than the covers yeah. for sure. Better produced. It's, it's good. Better, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm. I am sort of like, why did we do two songs? Yeah. It feels muddled. Yeah. It feels a little weird, but. Mm. But she sings her song. She goes up to everybody and does a little thing with them. Rocky standing in the background, kind of awkwardly, because she goes up to like everyone in her family. And she's like, and Rocky, you're also here yeah. for some reason. And at the end, after the song, Kimmy's like, "Hey, by the way, I'm pregnant." Yep. Yeah. 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 Which brings me to like the one we brought this up at the beginning, but like the biggest problem with this episode was just like how easily all of these problems yeah. are resolved. Yeah. Okay, like let's break it down. Because like Kimmy's problem is that she isn't getting pregnant. So the only way to resolve and then it, turns it out she is, is to pregnant. just wait until she finds out that she's pregnant. Oops, I'm pregnant. Yeah. J Money apologizes and Rocky's like, we're still not boyfriend and girlfriend, but we can make out. And he's like, great. So nothing changes. Um, and everyone else, there's some effort on the part of the adults, in, but not much. It's just sort of like we asked for our old jobs back and Becky got her job yeah. back. Uh, we were sad. Also, Joey's problem was not addressed at all. Yeah, he's not like even a problem. his problem was that he's gonna have to take he's gonna have to be alone with his kids, and he's like, I guess I'm just alone with my kids. <laughs> so really, out of the three like main characters from Full House, only Jesse is resolved. And then Max's problem just requires the effort of a completely different character. He just gets yep. lucky. CJX Machina. Max's problem is that Xanax CJ had to start Machina. taking Xanax. <laughs> yeah. But either way. Do we want to go into Sad Boy of the Week? Yes, the final Sad Boy of the Week for season three. I think I have like one major contender. I have one major. I was thinking about it and I'm like, there's some people you can nominate, but I think there's maybe a pretty obvious there's a, choice. I feel like it's pretty obvious to me that it's got to be Danny yeah, this it's week. Gotta it's got to be Danny Tanny. It's got to be Danny Tanny this week. 
Uh, can we just like Tyler points out case? Lonzo Ball, but I don't think ooh, anyone in ooh, history has been as sad Lonzo, as Danny Tanny. Ooh, Lonzo, I think there's like good ones where it's like a one-off. Like Lonzo Ball is definitely worth a nomination. I think CJ is worth a nomination, even though we CJ never see her on screen. Like I think I know it's always, but I think like Jay Money maybe merits a nomination. Yes, definitely. Yeah, but I think I think it's Danny. It's I think it's Danny. Danny. I'm not. I'm not even gonna run through it. I think it's Danny. Well, can you run through Danny at least? Yeah. Like <laughs> okay. as a summary of um, his victory. Danny <laughs> Danny wakes up in a bed with uh five other men. Her no, he wakes up in bed with four other men. Yes. Only one of which was there when he fell asleep. Only one of which was there when he fell asleep. Um this also includes Fernando, who he does not know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he cries in the shower. No, he not he, he he bathtub sorry he cries in the bathtub he unloads his problems onto max instead of helping his grandson (laughs) grandpa what do you have any wisdom for me no let me tell you about my stuff (laughs) um he does not get his job back so he is forced to sit alone drinking chocolate milk (laughs) he reunites with the woman he almost married 20 years ago um and but not much comes out of it. It's more like, hey, crazy, right? Yeah. Okay, crazy. And she's like, what? You're still doing the same stuff that you did 30 years ago? Yep. And he's like, yep. Um, and speaking of still doing the same stuff he did 30 years ago, he's like, I may be divorced. I may be unemployed, but I'm going to move back into my old house where I'm definitely wanted. <laughs> and make my two adult daughters share a bedroom again. It's going to be just like old times. I don't have any issues. What are you talking about? Remember when things were good in Full House? Uh, yeah, I think I think we got to give it to Danny this yeah. week. I think it's Danny. I think it's Danny. So, Tanny. now that it's the end of season three, I think this is a good as time as good a time as any to go through to run down the leaderboard and see how mm-hmm. everybody's doing right now. Okay, let's do so, it. Uh, in first place right now, to nobody's surprise, uh, is J Money with nine wins. Yes. Second Wonderful. place is a tie between Stephanie and Fernando with five. So Jay Money's like running away with it. Uh, mm-hmm. Steve is in third place with four. Uh, the following characters have three. It is Ramona, Matt, and now Danny has his third win. DJ, Kimmy, Max, and Uncle Jesse have two. And then the one column, which is probably my favorite, because it's just like, <laughs> what the fuck, has yeah. Macy Gray, Rocky, Sad Teacher Man, and Mankowski. Oh my god. Love it. That's the one column is the most fun. The one column is the most fun by far because yeah. it's just like random like side characters who don't really show up all that often but made an impact. What was yep. the episode where Rocky was the sad boy of the week? Oh, wait, uh, I think that that's the one where she had to like stay over with them yeah. and yes. slowly. Yeah, got that's where she like stayed over. And, yeah, right, yeah. right. Oh yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think that's it for season three okay. of Fullest House. Yeah. yeah. What a time. This season is really... What a time. This season impressed me in a lot of ways. It's been a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. And we have a really good in-between episode idea. So we're really excited to record that. Oh, we've got something yep. good planned. Stay fucking tuned. Oh, this is yep. great. Okay. All right. So I guess... Is that it? You guys have anything else you need to say? No, no. Right. Take, us take us home. Go for it. Thank you guys for listening. If you want to find us more, uh, you can go to Fullest House Pod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This has been such a joy. I'm Harrison Bloom. I'm Zach Horowitz. And I'm Mark Green. And until next time, may your houses be fuller. And tune in next time to our podcast about the Fullest House. It's called the Fullest House Podcast. That's about it. Goodbye. See you guys in season four!